video, I'm going to be talking about method selection when we're dealing with triangles. So all I mean by this is when we see a question that involves triangles, we have a process we need to go through in our head where we decide which of the many things we know about triangles are going to be useful in this question. And that is something that will get better with practice, and it's something that we can work on specifically, so that's what we're going to be doing today. So, with triangles, there are lots of things that we know we can do. Triangles, uh, as a topic, is one where there happen to be a lot, a lot of things going on. There are a lot of things we know about triangles, which is brilliant. But the downside is that because there's so many things that could be going on, we have to think a little bit harder about which one to use. So we could use the facts about interior or exterior angles. So we know that the interior angles of the triangle add up to 180 degrees. That might end up being useful. We know the exterior angles add up to 360 degrees. We could use Pythagoras' theorem. The a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where we have a right angle triangle and c is the high length of the hypotenuse. We could use one of our area formulae. So we know we have half base times height and a half a b c. Half a b sine c, sorry. Those are two possible formulae that we could use. We could use the trigonometric ratios, Sokotoa. We could use the congruence rules. So side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, or right angle, hypotenuse, side. And we could use the sine rule, or we could use the cosine rule. So these are some things we know about that may be useful. Now, of course, because maths is beautiful, it's all very, very connected. There's a lot more than this that we could be using. Just because a question has a triangle doesn't mean it's definitely going to be one of these things. These are just things that we know that are related to triangles that seem like they're the most likely things to be useful. So if I see, so I might want to know when I can use these, and that's what we're going to be looking at now. So for example, Pythagoras' theorem, as I said in the description, it has to be a right angle triangle. If we're not looking at a right angle triangle, then it's probably not a question about Pythagoras, unless it's in some way implied in the question that we're trying to find out if it's a right angle triangle. So essentially, I'm looking for a question that in some way involves a right angle and some way involves three sides. Now, of course, that can take their very different forms. It could be that they give you two of the sides and ask you to find the third one, given that it's a right angle. Or, as I said, it could be that you are given all three of the sides and asked to find out if it's a right angle. So there are different ways they can ask that question. But that's this basic setup we're looking at. With an area question, I would expect the word area to come up somewhere, or there to be some kind of indication that it's an area question. So it might be that the units given are centimetre squared. Now I know that that's a measure of area. So if I see a triangle and I see centimetre squared, I'm going to start thinking about area. It could be that I want to use the trigonometric ratios. In that case, I'm looking again for a right angle triangle. And I'm also looking for two sides and one angle. That's the setup we have for Sokotoa. If I'm looking for congruence, if I'm expecting congruence to be part of the question, I need there to be more than one triangle, because I need to be comparing two triangles to see if they are congruent to each other. If it's the sine rule, then I'm going to see two sides and the opposite angles. So by that I mean the angles that are opposite to these two sides, because if you remember how we label our triangle with the sine rule. We have the capital letters matching the little letters. So the capital letters on the angles matching the little letters on the sides. And so we're looking for those two pairs that go together. And then we would use the sine rule. And finally, if I'm going to use the cosine rule, I'm expecting to see three sides and one angle. OK, so here's an example of a question to do with a triangle. And it just says find x. Now I'm aware that at GCC level, most of the questions are a little bit wordier than this. They would probably put a bit more information in. It's not just gonna be a picture of a triangle and the words find X. But I've, I've tried to bring out the core of what a question would be asking you. So here, I'm looking at which of these is gonna be the most useful to me in trying to find what X is. 
Well, I can see that I have a right angle triangle. This square in the corner means it's a right angle. So automatically I'm thinking either Pythagoras or the trig ratios. Those are the things we tend to use when we have right angle triangles. So that's what's jumping out at me straight away. If I look a bit closer, I notice that I have an angle and two sides. Now the angle isn't given to me, but it's part of the question. So I have an angle and two sides, which is exactly what I wanted for the trigonometric ratios. So I think I'm going to be using Sokotoa. Now at this point, we get another bit of method selection, because I again have to now decide which, so which of Sokotoa am I going to be using, which function am I going to be using. To do this, I need to label my sides, adjacent, opposite, hypotenuse, and I can see that it's the opposite and the hypotenuse that are involved. So I'm going to be using sof, opposite and hypotenuse. I know that sine of x is 4 over 8 because it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. So x is going to be the inverse sine of 4 eighths, which I actually know because that's an exact value. So x is going to be 30. So you'll notice here that in a question like this, the first step, and arguably the, the hardest step, is to work out what I'm going to do. As soon as I've worked out what I'm going to do, I just plow on with it. And we're hopefully getting quite practiced at plowing on with it. OK, here is a different question. So again, it looks really similar, but I'm not going to be using the same knowledge. I'm not going to be using the same rules. So the question says, find x. But this time I haven't got a right angle triangle. So last time I was tempted to use Pythagoras' theorem or the trigonometric ratio straight away because I had a right angle triangle. This time I can't use them because I don't have a right angle. Well, what do I have instead? I have three sides and an angle, which is the price, precisely the setup we needed for the cosine rule. So I think I'm going to be using the cosine rule here. Now, we have two versions of the cosine rule. So again, a bit more method selection needed. We have a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, or we have cos a is b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc. Those are two equivalent versions of the same rule, but we need to method select which one is going to be the better one in this situation. Clearly, I'm finding an angle. So the second one is probably going to be more used to me. I'm going to use that one. I'm going to label my triangle. So because I'm using the cosine rule, I need my A to be the angle that I'm trying to find. Then the other two angles can go anywhere, and then the side lengths are properly labelled opposite their partner. We then have the cosine rule, so I can substitute them in. Cos of x is equal to 8 squared, which is b squared, plus 5 squared minus 4 squared over 2 times 8 times 5 which if I tap into a calculator is 73 over 80. And then to find x, I need to inverse cos and get 24.14. And again, I went through that pretty quickly because I'm hoping that you've already seen the cosine rule now. The bit I want you to focus on today is the choosing of which rule to use. Okay. Here we have a different question. Now this one, the word area is jumping out at me. And again, I will reiterate that in a GCSE paper, it's not always going to be that obvious because there might be more than seven words on the page. It might be that there's a big paragraph of text and you have to pull out the fact that we're talking about an area. But nonetheless, I can see the word area, which means I'm going to be using my area formulae. Now once again, we have a bit of method selection. We have to decide which one to use. and I don't seem to have a perpendicular height, but I do have a side angle side, which is the normal setup for half AB sine C. So I'm going to use that to use this. I first label the angle C because that's the one in the question, and that's the one that I've been given. Then I label the other two, doesn't matter which way, and then I label all the sides so that the correct letters are opposite each other. Now, because of what the question says, the area of the triangle is 25. 
that means that half AB sine C is 25. So when I substitute in, A is X, B is 8, and sine C is 41. When I substitute all that in, I have to make that equal to 25, because that's what I'm told the area is. I can then simplify that side. I can just type in half times 8 times sine 41 into my calculator, which is 2.62. Then divide both sides by that 2.62. And that means that x is approximately 9.53. So that length there is approximately 9.53. But I had to use the area formula to work that out. Here we go, we have a question. Now again, I'm noticing that right angle straight away. That right angle is jumping out at me. So already I'm thinking either Pythagoras' theorem or the trigonometric ratios. Then I look a little bit closer and I see that I have two sides and an angle. So it looks like I'm again going to be using the trigonometric ratios. I'm going to be using Sokotoa. So I'm going to label my triangle. I always label my triangle for Sokotoa. And this is again that bit of method selection that you need to be able to do. Which one am I going to use? Well the adjacent here is x and the hypotenuse is 8. So I'm going to be using because I've got adjacent and hypotenuse. So cos of 41 is x over 8, is the statement that I get from ka. Times both sides by 8 to get x on its own. And then type 8 cos 41 into a calculator and get that x is approximately 6.04. Okay, one final example. So again, it just says find x. And you notice that most of these just say find x because that's not really where the information is. The information is in the picture. Now, I don't have a right angle triangle here. So straight away, I know I'm not going to be using those two. So they require a right angle triangle. What do I have, though? Well, I appear to have two of these pairs that we've talked about. I seem to have it set up. So I've got an angle and a side and an angle and a side. So because I've got these pairs, I think I'm going to be using the sine rule. So the sine rule looks like this, sine A over A, sine B over B, sine C over C. Now it's worth noting that I've already done that little bit of method selection for you, because I have noticed that I'm going to want the one where the sine is on the numerator, because it's an angle I'm trying to find. So I've already decided that this is the version of the sine rule that's easiest to use. Uh, then I'm going to label all my angles doesn't matter for the sine rule at all. So I just make sure that these little letters are opposite their capital pair. Now because I just happen to have not labelled C, I'm not going to need the sine C over C bit. Don't need that bit. I just need the sine A over, sin, over A equals sine B over sine B, which I then substitute in. So I've said that A is X. I've said that little a is 4. I've said that capital B is 51 and little b is 8. Substitute those values in. I'm going to times both sides by 4 and type that into a calculator so I can see that sine x is approximately 0 0.39. Then I'm going to unsign both sides. I'm going to do the inverse sign of 0 0.39, which gives me 22.87. Okay, so the key point I wanted you to get from this video is that you need to be able to choose the best method when you see a question about triangles. You know lots about triangles. There are lots of methods available, and I want you to practice being able to choose the best one to use in any situation.